Joe Manila. I heard from them. But let's, let's begin. Do have a motion to begin with the meeting? Let's do the meeting. Um, Brian has very graciously in the past taken notes while joining the meeting. Um, I believe Joe Manila had volunteered at the last meeting to take notes a few minutes during our following. following meeting. Please not here. Do I have a volunteer to do that for us? I'm Joe Hayes, I'm the Vice Chair of Board. We're 
Mr. Jones, appointed by the Common Council. Tom Brown, appointed to use the Radio Academy. Thank you, Mayor. Chairman, I have two things in front of you. Thank you. Sure. Yeah, this is not necessarily something uh, that's specific for Channel 16. Um, basically, I think I mentioned last time around, this is what they're using in Schenectady. Uh, they sell about four or five different products. It seems to be these would be the most useful for us. Uh, it will allow for the stations to stream, uh, which I would like to get back at some point and talk about the value of that. But it will allow each station to stream. Uh, in addition, we can also do video on demand. So we can put video on demand on the website of the city. It can be on the channel, uh, the channel all the website. It can be on the new school website. Uh, I think it's more in Schenectady. The biggest you know, value is for the public meetings because they have all these meetings archived uh, for video on demand. The, if I can elaborate just for a minute, all the scenario. basically. Uh, we have reached phase two funding, as far as I'm concerned. I discussed it with Nicolini and Joe. Uh, I believe we've met that requirement because on uh, 16, we're producing about, as it says in this uh, email, about 70 hours a week. 25 hours a week uh, is live programming. And then there's about uh, 70 hours a week in total that's original programming. So at any rate, phase two, calls for us to be able to get a fiber optic cable at both City Hall and also at the library. Uh, if we do that, then it's, you know, there's no reason that we can't stream all of these meetings that are happening upstairs. Now, if we do not go with the uh, cloud and we elect not to bother putting this on the internet, uh, we, if we have fiber optic cable, we can still send it to we can still send it to Harriman, and it can be introduced to the channel directly, and it can go live to uh, Time Warner, and it can be carried on. <coughs> so, you know, at the very least, I think we should pursue getting fiber optic connectivity as quickly as we can. I can't believe it's not already here. Uh, the city uses um, uh, tech value. The library uses tech value. I'm sure. Mickelina has contacted us. She's going to check on whether or not uh, there is fiber optic, but there is no capacity fiber optic here. So I think we should look at that. Uh, and then we say if we go to the cloud, and if we go, uh, well, the cloud gives us both things. It gives us both a video on demand, and it also gives us the ability to stream live. For an additional $720 per channel, these things can also be viewed on people's handheld devices, like uh, you know, an iPhone or your iPad or whatever. So the whole price, as you can see here, the entire price for these things is about $16,000. He's already agreed to a 15% discount, which would knock it about to this price here, $13,859. I suspect I might be able to twist his arm down to 20%, which would reduce to $13,000. Uh, we have probably close to 40,000 left in phase one, and there's over 200,000 in phase two, for which we really have no particular purpose at this point in time. Uh, seems to be kind of, to me, it seems to be a no-brainer. The problem with our reach right now is just in the city of Albany, it's rather limited. Uh, so that's the reason we have to you know, move on to buying this piece of equipment. Uh, any questions about how any of this works? Or Well, with 
of committee that evaluates the current technology and looks at new technology and at the same time takes a pricing of ongoing maintenance costs, ongoing services, so that we can stretch our entire budget over the next eight years. Is what so, Richard, I don't know if you care to spend any money. Uh, at this point in time, if you have 30 to 40,000 left, it seems to be an appropriate purchase for video on demand and also for streaming. Oh, no, no. no. You know, not, but I agree. Yeah. And I don't know where we're going to earmark that money either. I'm not sure what's going to be purchased. I don't know. And if I can't really see anything unless the people really embrace the public studio. Uh, when it's kind of drifting a little bit. Just to make one I don't, I don't disagree with you. I mean, as a technology attorney, I love things that are, you know, that you registering and that kind of stuff. But if you do sort of you know, see the pants and half about Absolutely. Um, the prices going to um, streaming and to video on demand without having to put a plan for expenditures in place, we use up most of our money just in that one service. We don't have a lot of money left over for buying new equipment, buying new drops in other parts of the city. That's, that's the point. Yeah, no, no, I think it's a good point. I just seem to make the 12,000. But at any rate, the last thing I'd like to talk about is the, uh, it kind of ties in with this. The, I was at the studio all day today. When I you know, went into the studio following the exit of Joe, um, it's really, you know, I don't know how many of you have been down here. It was filthy. It hasn't even been back here. It's filthy dirt. The equipment is all dusty. The wires are all over. The chairs look like something out of this worse than the Salvation Army. I'm sure the Salvation Army looks much better. There's panels, boards up there. It's a disgrace. It's an embarrassment. Now, there's nothing that I would like to operate like that at the school. Now, having said that, I should have come down here sooner. I thought we were in pretty good shape, but I won't let that happen again. I work closely with Joe and I work closely with Justin. I met with him today at 11 o'clock. We went through everything. Figured out the schedule when he was there. From um, one o'clock on, uh, Joe and I worked all day. We went through all the wiring, video, audio, everything. Everything's back in place. I brought my vacuum, my cleaning things. The place is, it looks good, and, and everything is up and running. We we have money in the budget to get some new furniture. We need to sit in there. We need to make it look like something. I also asked Justin exactly how many producers we have at this point in time. We have about five people producing, five to six people producing shows at this point. Uh, a lot of the program that's done is done by religious organizations, it's done at their churches, they send it and we just put it on the channel. But in terms of actual program developed there, it's about five different producers doing kind of a, you know, a variety of things. So I think as we go down the road, we should certainly be cautious with our expenditures. We don't know what we're going to be purchasing. Uh, but I think a big part of it is going to be how actively the general public embraces it. And of course now most of your producers are putting things up on YouTube, they're not even going to public. So it's something to consider. Uh, but at any rate, it's, it, it kind of drifts, I kind of drifted off the topic, but uh, it's an overview. Thank you. Um, based on the concept of putting together a technology committee, I'd like to table this purchase until we can have a better understanding of all the technology that we currently have, what are their holes, and what would be the best for all the channels. Are we in agreement that we can wait a little while on this before we pull the trigger? So we, we know that we have the capability of having fiber at the library so that the library can take advantage of live streaming and the same thing from the city. Um, <coughs> Joanne, um, in our last meeting you had um, right. a quick request for the College of St. Louis. I had um, raised the possibility that we buy two more um, camcorders and the accompanying equipment so that we have more um, cameras available for use by the students who are in, or the, I should say the, the residents who are in the um, public workshops that we offer. Okay, and what you're getting is two Canon HFM 50s, right. SD cards, cases, UV filters, two microphones per camera, and tripods. Yes, two different, micro, two different types of microphones. Okay. And it, it um, I had prices from two vendors, <coughs> and they, they are pretty close. One is uh, audio visual of um, Albany with um, a price of $1,758. The other is B&H, um, the large company in New York City. And it's a little tricky with them because they're constantly uh, offering rebates that come <coughs> over certain periods of time. But at the present moment, they would be um, through Mark 
March 2nd, about 1598, and after March 2nd, about 1798. Is there any discussion from the board? I received quite a lot of email uh, on behalf of the board, um, usually from the city and other members, and I feel as though it's appropriate to share those emails with other members of the board because that's my feeling about the government. I don't think I should be a place where information stops. It should flow through me to all of you. I just don't want to flood your mailboxes, so I'm asking if there's anyone who doesn't want to have that information, just say so, otherwise you're going to see it. Okay? All right, um, Joanne had also asked to speak about um, upcoming training at the College of St. Rose and the coordination of the subject matter with the training that's going on at the studio and the capabilities of the equipment and, and software being the software there. I think. All right, uh, it's getting to be the time where we have to think about from a scheduling point of view from the college's uh, summer program when we would hold the workshops and also, um, to discuss among ourselves whether you think that the idea of having four topics rotating them um, really is the way to go this year, and whether we think we want to build the number of producers if we really want to zero in on a more fundamental uh, the, the class, classes one and two that we offered as opposed to three and four, and exactly how we want to handle that. I have contacted Justin a couple of times, once after he was appointed, and he asked me if he could wait till the new year. And then I just uh, emailed him again yesterday because I didn't know if he would be at tonight's meeting. And um, we could talk a little, but I guess um, <coughs> when I heard that, that, I think at the last meeting someone said that there was a desire to have some training at the library, and I thought the training ought to dovetail. Um, and we ought to figure out if anybody thinks we were lacking uh, some phase of the training in the workshops last year and how we ought to adjust those as we go forward this year. There were also nuts and bolts problems with registration. People got shocked out after they said we were coming. Other people being closed out and we can try to figure out a better registration system this time around to um, avoid 
avoid those kind of problems. But I think for us as the board, the biggest question is, what do you think about what happened last year, and do you want to go that route again this year? Or do we have other thoughts? A lot of thought, and a lot of thought and time went into creating that whole mm -hmm. workshop concept um, and, and the, uh, the subject material in, in each one of them. So it would probably take a bit of, a bit of work to hatch that, hash that out. And I'm wondering if Justin and the instructor that was at St. Rose might be the right that? people to be discussing this because I don't know if we can really set what the agenda of the training is going to be. Okay. I, I, don't, I don't know if we can. I mean, we could, certainly could come up with something, but I think they're better prepared because they, they know the equipment that they're working with and probably could have discussions at the correct level to each of their own on what it should be. I didn't, um, I got, I'm sorry, I didn't understand exactly how it was done last year. I thought it was, it was the board that decided that there should be four topics and that um, they should be rotated in the order in which they were rotated. Or and we basically did it at school. We went through our TV production department, tried to figure out to pull the teachers, and we came up with some ideas about what people we might teach in the seminars. Mm -hmm. the, the thing that I'd be interested in is how many people that attended those seminars have produced content for the Access Channel. Uh, I, I was interested in getting the information as to who did sign up and, and who actually attended, right. because I don't know that I would perhaps blacklist those people who didn't attend from signing up again. And then compare to see who are who are our list of producers to see that it, it was effective. Um, and regarding registration, I don't know if maybe it should be refundable deposit made. Um, a ten dollar a ten dollar deposit that you get back when you show up at the class. I don't know. Well, um, two thoughts. I mean, we do build them as being free, so I don't know how people feel about. Having made a deposit, and also in terms of, of um, listing the names, you know, we didn't tell people that um, when they signed up that there was going to be a report issue, and so there's a little bit of a concern on the part of the college about whether or not we're violating anybody's privacy by turning over our list. That's a good point because and you are not a public entity; you're a private entity. Right. So the thought is that that this year, you know, we would maybe handle that a little bit differently and, and let people know that uh, we might be asked to provide a list. Um, but I need to research that a little bit further on our end. Um, what I do know is that, uh, at least from the registration list for the class, that many people registered <coughs> for all the classes. Whether they took all the classes, I, I don't know myself. Um, but we have 15 slots in each class and in every slot in the state. That's good. <coughs> you know, Joe, in the, the cameras you're using now, are these, uh, I wonder if they are, uh, we have one field camera. I don't think anybody has checked that field camera out. I mean, there's also a danger in having people check them out that they're not going to their own business and shooting commercials and putting mm -hmm. some wedding videos and returning to the So that's, that's another area. But, the cameras, if you get the new cameras and you are teaching the same ones that could be used by the field production people, I think that, that is a good thing for you teaching the same equipment that they will eventually be using. Okay. What, what is the field equipment? That the field equipment is the cameras, right? It's, it's one of those, right? Yeah, it's field. That's field yeah, that's cameras. not what they're buying. They're buying mini camcorders. Yeah, but they're field, they're field cameras. Right. They're not studio cameras. Oh, yeah. right. They're field. With, 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 you know, with lights and a bag and a tripod and two different microphones, you know, a handheld wobbler. But the other thing is, I think we should look in the future at how many people uh, are coming in, uh, producing things in the, in, the, in the field, and then bring them in for to put on the, on the access channel. It seems to me most people are coming in now want to do a studio program. And the problem is a lot of them come with almost no experience. And they don't know how to run any of these things. And often they don't bring anybody with them. They're expecting a crew to be there. They're going to show up with a script in the hand, and we're going to take care of it. Uh, so, you know, those people that when you train, I know Justin and uh, Joe will be training them at, at the library, but I guess that's something we ought to kind of think about to make sure there's not too much disconnect. We do have Sony Vegas down there, the same software you're using to add on. So if you're teaching them Sony Vegas, uh, you know, again, you know, pretty other than software, you don't want to add that out. I mean, maybe we should be putting more time into the video editing portion of it. Well, what, uh, the person who's in the 
instructor last year told me was that some people came with some knowledge, yeah. but a lot of people came with no fundamental knowledge about how to use the camera right. and also how to use the computer, uh, a, how to use a computer, let, uh, let alone the editing portion of it. So mm -hmm. that if so that there's some really basic um, training that you that you want to give people, I think even before they would get on to the editing portion. And in some ways, I'm wondering if more of the ten classes. Um, ought to be devoted to the really basic stuff to make sure that people have a secure footing. Um, and then perhaps it's at the library with Justin and Joe where they learn, you know, the more sophisticated editing techniques. Well, the studio, they certainly have to learn there. Yeah. The editing, you know. Learn the either place. Either place, yeah. 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 And that's a good one. Yeah. Some contact information to all these people that took the classes. So that we could, I mean, ask them, did it fill in your needs? Did you go further? Did you take all four? Did you just um, go over your head and you got there the first day? I, I'll ask the instructor if she collected any further information. What I have is through the event break, which is the way um, we had people register. I have their original information, but I don't know whether uh, I, I can get back to them by email from what is left on that site. <coughs> what should the next steps be? Well, I think that I definitely want to get together with Justin and hope that our instructor can also meet and the three of us uh, talk about, you know, just give him an understanding of what it is that we're doing and he may have suggestions about how to tweak that. Mm -hmm. uh, or he may say, well, if you're doing that, then it's natural for me to do. As I, as I recall the development, we, we wanted the College of St. Rose training to be generic in nature, mm -hmm. not specific to any software or hardware, just to learn the basics of, you know, a story line, I think, was one of the things that we were developed, the basic use of a camera, the basic use of lighting and sound, and the basic use of editing. They're not going to learn anything about a video switcher at St. Rose because there's, there's no studio equipment there. So that's equipment-specific training that would have to take place at studio. So, I don't know if the program, if, if the scenario that we already have set up for College of St. Rose isn't, is, it may be the correct, it may be the correct thing. So. Okay, well, we'll, we'll try we'll to discuss it. I think you have, you have the best right. ideas to come up with the right answer. Okay, any more on College of St. Rose training? Hello. Okay, um. While we're this, while I was discussing with Nicolina the possibility of purchasing cloud services, which is actually a service, and <coughs> um, I asked her the question, can we purchase services? And because I thought I was under the impression that we use our funding for capital expenses. And she put the question to the Public Service Commission and got an answer back saying, yes, you can buy services that help enhance the operation of the smooth operation of the station. With that in mind, to me that we probably should get Roadrunner service for the studio at the library so that they can take a look at the video server from there using the GUI right now. They have to do a command line interface in order to do anything because the signal quality is so poor they, they can't use the internet for the dam. So um, I would like to suggest that we have Roadrunner installed as well as basic television service so that they can monitor channel log from the library. We have basic television. We do? Yeah, they give it to us for free, so it's in there. Oh, okay. We, we, they install it. So all they have to do is pay for the rotor edition. So we have basic cable. Okay. Yeah. They don't the library, but we do. I don't know if they do in the library or not. The studio has a separate line. The studio yeah, has basic cable. Yeah, the studio has cable. I don't know if we're in that for us. Okay. Well, with that in mind, the fact of the matter is we can, we can buy services. I would like to propose that we go ahead and get that done so that the library is not an in information island. You don't all tell about the phone to that too? Or? That's something that we could discuss. I'm not sure. Right now we're using um, uh, a Google phone <coughs> number that gets forwarded to, to one of the cell phones. I'm not sure what they really have it forwarded to at this point in time. But I think it goes to Justin's and Joe's cell phone. But I think this little phone would be a nice addition to the studio. about that. If not, I'd like to make a motion that we get a public service installed at the library that includes Roadrunner, phone service, and if they if we already have basic coverage, then that would that should fit the two. That's it. All in favor? Aye. Uh, Excellent. 
purchased uh, channelopening.tv as we previously discussed the last board meeting uh, with the intention of redeveloping a new web website outside of the website developed by uh, Joe Piazza. Uh, in the next couple of weeks, I want to meet with Justin and Joe to go over what they would like um, to do with the website. I can develop on the back end in probably the next week. So therefore, there'll be a content management system, whether it's uh, WordPress or Joomla or uh, Drupal or uh, Joomla, which are three different services. Um, we will do that uh, you know, for free on our end. The only thing that we'll ask the city is just to, to donate the the reimbursement is twenty nine ninety five for the year. Uh, but I would like it to be launched by the end of the month. Is really the intention. So if anybody has ideas of what they would like to see, that's currently not on the <coughs> previous channel only that or website.
cloud computing that you, the cloud service that you were talking about is a very good service, but there's going to be a yearly and annual charge. And as Richard was mentioning earlier, we're going to have to look down the eight years in front of us to see how much money we have to reserve for that. We have to look down eight years to see how much money we have to reserve for the maintenance of the company server. And the same thing for um, for roadrunner service at the library. We have to reserve those monies and from the funding that we have and the funding that we have <coughs> set it aside and then make other technology purchase decisions knowing what money we have left. So I, I would like to propose that we form a technology committee on, on this thing as board. <coughs> and I guess what I mean, what I'd like to do is um, make a motion that we do that. I'll say it. Great. All in favor? Okay, good. Now, we have a new technology committee, folks. <laughs> <laughs> what I'd like to do is have some knowledgeable people on that. So, Tom, you're nominated, number one, because we've been leaning on you throughout this whole thing. I'd like to be on it. I've been, and I'll, I'll say that I've been attending the um, Alliance for Community Media um, trade shows the past couple of years, where they are in the Northeast, and get to see quite a lot of equipment that's that's um, put together specifically pointed at the public access environment. So I, I have a pretty good idea of some of the equipment that's out there that we might want to deploy, <coughs> particularly upstairs in, in, in the chambers and talk about that next, I think. Um, <coughs> is there anyone else who'd like to volunteer to be on this committee? I envision this committee going to other communities to see what they've done rather than, we, rather than reinvent the wheel ourselves. Let's go take a look at what public access is around the area. Okay, is there anyone else you'd like to join that board members on these subcommittees? I would I would say yes to that. So so Tom, Joe, Joe. Hold on just a second. Was it was that it? The three of us? Joe, I would love to volunteer if we don't have time constraint, but if, if you could just, you know, regarding your, your activities, if you could just let us know what you're doing, I would try to attend as many things as I can. Okay. Well, whatever agenda this committee puts together will be shared with the entire board uh, and, and the public, for that matter. So I believe our community meetings would be public. So, all right, great. Um, and I would charge that committee to come up with that diagram that I was talking about and develop a roadmap for future technology so that we can move forward all hand in hand. hand, in hand. Okay. And that brings me to my next subject, and I talked briefly with this about this with Tom. The equipment we installed upstairs in the chambers is archaic to operate at best. It has two joysticks and an RS-232 or parallel port switch that would normally be used for, for printers to switch those joysticks from one camera to the other camera. And those joysticks are to turn the cameras, move them up and down, zoom them in and out, and focus them in and out. And um, after you push the button to select which one you're going to move, you also have to push another button on the video switch to select which camera is actually feeding to the DVD recorder. So it, it, it makes for some pretty crazy looking videos that I've, that I've created and that Nick Dorado was creating. They're, they're just very difficult to control. There are such things as um, multiple camera units with presets so that you just press a touch screen, say Richard Conti, that think it, it turns a camera to him, focuses the eye on him, adjusts the zoom appropriately, and then takes the video from that camera and that's through live feed. And it just makes so much more sense to have a system like that, which is easier to operate. So when we do have volunteers up there doing it, it's not like you're playing an ancient game of Pong. So, um, and, and the equipment we have was was purchased because we we're trying to save money, and it was it was a used set from someplace I don't remember exactly where. But I, I think if we're going to look at the, the expenditure of our money on technology, that should be something we look at. I would encourage this committee. That we just developed to take a serious look at that as part of uh, as a big hole that needs to be filled. You know, I would take some exception to that, John. Okay. I think it's a good idea. The equipment I just I bought last fall uh, to 
uh, run this, the secondary TV show that we're running now. Again, I was thinking before I did that because we, we could not get enough people to come forward and want new television shows. We reached out, everybody couldn't, so we developed a second idea. I went ahead and bought that equipment on my own because I wanted this to reach the 25 hours. And I did not want to wait for six months to do it because I knew that you know, the time was ticking and we had set, set a long period of time. That equipment that I bought has robotic cameras. We have three Sony robotic cameras. We have the joystick you're talking about. We have the same switcher that's at the library, that the black magic switcher, and, and a multi-view monitor. So it can all be done with that. It cost me for that setup about, you know, by the time I got that, it was 12 to 14,000, somewhere in that range. Does that have presets? Yeah, it's presets. It has, all, it has a lot of them. It has maybe 10 presets per camera. Uh, but what, you know, a totally unrelated subject. I have a lot of equipment. I have a lot of interests, and not just television. I have all of these toys I play with. You have a bulldozer. I have bulldozers. <laughs> I have excavators. I have stuff you can't believe. I run all of these things. And the first bulldozer I bought, the blade only went up and down. I drove myself crazy. I needed to go back and forth. I wanted to do, go, do, do other things. I wanted to tilt and other things this way. And I was at the dealership, and this, oh, I tr went crazy trying to find how I could make this machine do all these things. And this old guy working there said to me, you know what? You learn to operate the machine you have. And I can do anything with that machine now. Not to say that this is going to be as good as a brand piece of equipment, but the fact of the matter is once you get used to operating it, but you can't just sit down with any of these things, even the new one, even the one we've got. We have a guy that runs it 30 hours a week, and it probably took him, you know, two or three weeks every day. And when I look over his shoulder, he still hits the wrong button quite frequently. So you still get some of those things. That system will give you a good product, but you have to have somebody in it that's really running it on a full-time basis. Now, I'm not saying we shouldn't buy new gear, but I'm really kind of just defending the gear that we have. No matter what you put in there, there is a learning curve before somebody really can make it talk. It's the same with a computer program or basically anything else. Well, I, I, I understand what you're saying, but I have worked that equipment on a number of occasions. I was the only one who was volunteering. Right, but a number of occasions, you know, four or five times is not going to make you an expert. No, 20 or 30 times, but what, what, <laughs> one at a time. Okay. I, I don't want to get into an That's argument right. about it, but what I, do want to do, what I do want to do is have this technology group that we've developed take a hard look at that and look at other solutions that are in other communities and find out if there's a better way for us to deal with it. Well, that setup I have is a good setup. It's a good setup. Okay. Okay. The one you have. One I bought, yeah. yes. it's, uh, it's, it's basically some of your robotic cameras with a joint remote control and okay. presets. Okay, um, I received an email of oh, funding. We, we need to find a way to increase the 15 hours for the coordinator position. I don't know where we're going to go, but we've got to do something about that. 15 hours is just absolutely laughable. It's, it's ridiculous. So I don't know. Where do we get the money from? Or do we expect not to go to the door? Or whether we have to go sit in front of the county council? Or whether we have to turn this board or Channel Albany into a 501c3 and start doing bake sales? I don't know what we have to do, but we need money to be able to pay people to run to run the, the studio. Yes, sir? Well, I think the easiest thing to do is just go to the county council and ask them and ask try to, try to get it to be included into um, the next uh, city budget. Um, when, when uh, certain people from the library, uh, the executive director, Dennis Gaffney, um, uh, appeared in front of the town council a couple of times. Um, you know, he, he made a, a rather large, long case for um, having uh, funding to fund personnel. And several of the city council members came up to him afterwards and said, well, what would you need? And I saw that as an incredibly positive development. Um, it, it kind of never went anywhere at that point in time because um, we had, uh, I'm blanking on what, what, what the city agency that provides the 15 hour contract. Um, ALDC. ALDC came, came, came forth, so that kind of calmed that issue down. Mm -hmm. um, but there were certain people on the, on the council that were very interested in trying to help uh, provide for personnel. Um, so that's one place. And um, I'm under strict instructions from the library not to offer any kind of <laughs> assets are funding, but you know that's that's uh, those were instructions from about two years ago. Um, maybe I could uh, uh, go in that direction, but I think there's several places where we could try to expand the 15 hours because I think we all agree that the 15 hours is probably it's really an insufficient. It's an and and it, it, if we could double that, that would be ideal. Um, I'm not sure if we can get quite that 
that much, but I think I would shoot. I would shoot for more than double. Yeah, we we should have at least one FTE. Considering we have the report uh, next week with the uh, the council meeting for that, that was one of the priority issues. Okay, that's part of our report. All right. Well, I guess our appeal to the town council is on our agenda then. Yeah. And well, uh, if I remember correctly, one of the people that came up to that was um, Jim Sano. I think at the time he was the chair of the finance committee. I'm not sure if he had the He still is. He still is. Um, so that's a pretty big shit to have. So I'm not sure if he's still being interested in discussions with, with other board members. And there, there, do, there does, or not board members, with other common council members. Mm -hmm. And there does seem to be some support when they be able to. And, and just to, um, to, to follow up on your, your previous point, um, another thing that Jim was very interested in, in is when we had the, the we were able to get common council meetings on the channel that they the production values were decent. Um, he was concerned about them looking very poor, like a lot of public access channels do. Mm -hmm. And um, so I think that we have. Um, you know, I don't want to get stuck in the middle of the debate between you and Tom. Um, I think I don't disagree with the equipment. If we have high production values, <coughs> that leads that will lead something like council member Sano to. Um, push harder for perhaps uh, some more hours in the city budget <laughs> for uh, our public assets coordinators. Any more discussion? I believe that does lead us into the next agenda item. We're wrapping things up pretty quickly here. Um, the Common Council, by way of Kashana, contacted me requesting a report from us at the Common Council office on the 16th, 530 upstairs. I'll certainly attend. Is there anyone else who would like to be part of that? Oh, yeah. Anybody else with about these? I can go, but I don't have any really to contribute to this. I'm sitting on the board. Moral support. Moral support. Moral support. Yeah, actually, yeah, that would be I good. Think that. Okay. Thank you, Joanne. Okay. And, and we already talked about fiber connectivity for um, the library and city hall and whether it comes from OFT and then OFT helped out get the connectivity to the campus for uh, the new school. Tech Valley. Or if we just use space to fund it to pay for it, so we can do live broadcast for all the channels and live stream capabilities from the belt, the television server. So that's all related to the, the <coughs> podcast software. I believe that should all get rolled into the, te the technology committee and uh, our roadmap should, should include <coughs> start investigating how to get that done. Any discussion? I think probably all the community. Andrew, you must know that there's, there's got to be clear about the cable here at City Hall or, or at the library, wouldn't there be? I mean, Tom was saying there's no there's no drop, there's no connection. I'm there, there's no way to go right up Elk Street, right past the library, but I think it's the final connection. Yeah. Okay. I think there's five all over the city. Yeah. Um, a lot of them. Right. So I mean, to connect to it. up and getting up and getting it strung into the building next to it. Which is the last. It's not, it's not so much the last mile in this case because you're very, very close. It's the last yeah. 30 yards, mm -hmm. 15 yeah. yards, you know. So, I mean, what can be the difficulty running a fire rocket wire cable? Not much, I would suspect, except, you know, it, I mean, your, your service at the library is being used by fire rocket. Yes, it is. I believe it's provided by technology. Yeah, yeah, right, which is the next room over. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it <laughs> can't be terribly difficult. We, we can certainly try to investigate that. And, you know, um, I, I think you know who our facilities manager, you, you spoke to our facilities manager several times. He would probably know best. Dan? Who? Yeah. Yeah. Marsha Middleton, I think, is there. And Marsha Middleton is the um, uh, uh, DIRC director. Um, so, and I think it, just, it, needs, it needs to be investigated um, more and, and perhaps pushed a little more. And if I can circle back to the other thing for the, in regard to the, the road runner and the phone service, mm -hmm. um, you know, I think, you know, we had a discussion last time about, you know, getting some, um, some maintenance for a server and, you know, um, that's some 
good advice from the Corporation Counsel's Office to try to get the price down. And, and I think that we should be asking Time Warner for research. <laughs> we did already. <laughs> and they said no. They right. said no before they gave us the cable. That was it. Well, that's but, uh, yeah, that the installation's there. That's something good. So uh, you know, maybe, maybe it's, you know, it's, it's a different, it's a different yeah, time. Maybe we can ask again. Absolutely. If not, you know, pay the money, but. I think McLean is already going to ask me for that. She's also right. checking with Tech Valley about uh, the, the cable. Because they have, uh, the city, city hall has Tech Valley also. It's their provider. So she has a, she has a contact there. So. Yeah, if the fiber is already in the building. Can then go ahead and find the building. But the server's sitting uh, in the next room. You know where all the broken furniture is? It's the servers. Mm -hmm. The library. Yeah. So it's maybe not even fit. <laughs> yeah, so it depends on who's smart yeah. order to actually end up using it. Exactly. That's another issue. Okay, that, that's certainly something that the uh, committee should um, be discussing. Um, I don't know what you guys schedule, but I guess I'll send out an email asking for availability so that we can schedule a technology meeting, map out, and I should not be able to go back to the technology and map out. So I'll do that. And you know, Joe, if you and Joe would like to come to the school and see what we install over there, I'd love to. Yeah, yeah that's been a so lot. The same thing you want to do. Okay. Um, on, an, on an old agenda, I found this old business about marketing, and we never did anything with it. And so we were talking about stories of interest. We were talking about having, I believe, these flyers in the rotunda. And in the kiosks in Washington and Mark. And um, I think we're talking about getting the channel how many posts we made. I know we have two large posters at the library, um, which are being fixed so they don't reflect the incorrect URL. They are in fact. Yeah. So um, just, just a quick discussion about us getting our brand out in front of people. We really should be doing something like this. I, I, I don't know what happened with Ashley and the original for these things, and what the development is. I, I guess I'll get in touch with Mike Gavlin to ask you know, if we can get the original document in electronic format. But we have to start thinking about how we can get the table. Did uh, you actually email us? Or did she? Yeah. I want to say I saw the email. So I have to check. She said she was no longer with the city of Wall. Um, yeah, but like a while ago, she created oh. the email for me to fly it. We just emailed around. I was saying, oh, we've got to get somebody from the mayor's office. Yeah, we've got to get yeah. somebody from the school district. From the mayor's office. Yeah, we've got to get. That's a good point. I'll be back up for the church. Is it our responsibility as a board to approach those entities to see to it that they do that? Or is it up to the county council to make sure that the positions on this board are kept filled? It's another mm -hmm. thing you can bring up on the 16th.
based on some yeah, people's yeah, associations, yeah. churches, uh, other, other institutions, and anything yeah. that they had access to. And I believe none of us did that. I'm, I'm, I'm no. certain none of us have done that, and, and I think there's some value to it. So, can you circulate that bubble? I sure can, um, but I, I think um, one thing though that we want to do is that have a, a real, a, a good solid uh, uh, set of coordinators at, at, at the uh, public access site who are, you know, experienced and open. Not that I want to, you know, put off making any presentations. We can certainly make a certainly make presentations and say, you know, they are new. Um, these are their hours. We have a schedule. We do have a schedule. Oh yeah, what is it? Actually, I believe it's out of the car. I believe it's Wednesday, Thursday, and Saturday. Joe will be there Wednesday and Thursday. Uh, one day is 6 to 9, the other day is 4 30 to 9. And uh, Justin is going to be there at 11 to 4 30 on Saturday. Now, that's, that's close. That's, that's rough. I've got it in my car. Okay. I can email it to you. Yeah, please do. Do you think they would be amenable to coming to the next board meeting? I know that. Yeah, I don't think we can. I, th I think they would be as long as it's not on a regular basis. I didn't. If Joe asked me about that today. Now he worked all afternoon for nothing. I mean, he was there from eleven o'clock this morning until five thirty when he left there. Did a great job. Uh, he has a seven and a half hour week job with us. You know, to ask him to come on a regular basis to attend the meeting, I don't know. Maybe. Oh, I don't mean it. I just yeah, I'm sure they would be happy to do it. Absolutely, I'm sure they would. They need to make it important for us to at least yeah. know. I think so. Yeah, I think around. so. I mean, if we really wanted them on a more regular basis, we could cut them off from their schedule. No, I wouldn't <laughs> say that that would be an important trade. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I'll send a jump in the email. And our next one is this from Ashley, or did this come from somebody else? Ashley's put it together, I'm pretty sure. You know, Joe, back in the question, how did it get the word out? How about the comment? Sometimes, though, I mean, it's, it's just covering the community, and that's basically the kind of stuff that I've submitted. Um, I've seen a thing called Democracy Now. I've watched mm -hmm. that a few times. Mm -hmm. uh, there's Dr. Jeanette Thornton, she's a psychiatrist, that talks about eating disorders. It actually shows me the other day. Live church. Live yeah. church. Yeah. 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 Conservative Brown table. They have Joe. Piazzo got a lot of those. Um, I, think so. I know Justin was one of the producers today. You know, again, a lot of the people, the ministers, are so bringing their own content. 
people coming into the, the studio to do shows, you know, a variety of, uh, you know, of interests and uh, some of its political in nature, and just quite an eclectic group that can yeah, <laughs> do exactly. these shows. Channel 16 <laughs> has work. a lot of music video type stuff on it. So I do a few times a week, just circle, see what 16, 17. We do, basically what we're trying to get is as many people as we can we have to come yeah. to the city from all the colleges. We have to have something to do with together. Mm -hmm. I was this discussion from up with Senator John. The point is, if you go to private, <coughs> my vision for 16 is, is to create a television station that is everything at all. It brings in the college, it brings in the entity, it brings in, you know, the palace theater, the Gossip the Times, whoever, whatever's happening in town, you know, if the, anybody can come in and go on, and go on that station. But if, if it's all about quality, uh, I think eventually we will gain some kind of a viewing audience. <coughs> to have something to glue it together. You can't operate a station. You know, it, it now costs me, I'm going to tell you honestly, it costs me $1,000 a week to run the station. It cost me $100,000 last year between salary and equipment and hiring Joe for last year and have to install most of these things. I have not realized one dime from the operation of this television station. Not one dime. That's thousand dollars a week I'm paying right now, I get nothing in return. If I was spending a thousand dollars a week in advertising, I'd be way ahead of the game and have a lot more students in school. But I think that eventually we can develop a really good TV station that people really want to watch. And it involves everybody involved. And it's at a professional level, not an amateur level, which is what you're always going to get on a public access channel. We could actually make that a nonprofit and then maybe get people that would support with contributions and it could fund everything. But you're not going to get contributions <coughs> to Channel 18 because of the caliber of the program. It's not going to be enough quality programming to get people to actually, you know, want to contribute or want to, you want to, you know, sponsor a program. But I think eventually we could get that. We could have really a professional station. And people say, well, what are you from music videos for? What are you going to do in between? Well, yeah, I mean, David doesn't even show music videos. So <laughs> <laughs> exactly. 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 <laughs> what I'm saying is 16 has a lot of music mm -hmm. on it. 17 has the space shuttle going at near the capsule. And 18, that, which exactly. is the one we're sort of focusing on now, right. has a nice uh, mix of religious things and psychiatrists. Exactly. Talk. Kathy Plant was on the other day from the visitor center where she was talking about Anyway. And these are the things it should be. It should be the, the 18 is the opportunity for anybody in the public that wants to be seen on television and has a point to make. That's what 18 is there for. Uh, and I think our obligation is to provide the facilities to do it. I don't think it's necessarily our obligation to go out and drum up business that which we then have to hire people to, to stay at. But I think if we provide the opportunity, if business comes, then we have to figure out a way to man. But you know, for us to go out every day trying to bring more and more people, I'm not sure that's our charge. Our charge is to provide a service for the, for the community. That's what we're doing. They have a studio. If they need more equipment, if people are using it so much that we need more, if we need more field gear, better studio equipment, fine. But right now, it's not been demonstrated that anything is an overload situation. But the problem has been up until now, open one day a week is a disgrace. I mean, that's, that's not right. Now we're going to change that. We're going to be open three days a week. We'll get some volunteers. We'll have the staff to on a more steady basis, and I think it's a nice opportunity for the people, but only time will tell, you know, what happens with it. Yes, sir. Uh, it is our charge to make them look aware that this is a public asset that exists. I, 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 I do, too. Well, I think it's to make, us, make them aware. Yeah. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. That's, that's our charge to make them aware. Part of the resolution that created this board. Right. To make them aware. But it's not that like we're trying to necessarily drag them in. If they, we just want to make them know it's there. If they yeah. want to use it, we have all the services to put. This is what I was getting at with the targeting comment. It could be easy to use these flyers, or a kiosk, or social media, targeting people that traditionally produce content for public access and start there, and then it kind of grows. Well, Justin was talking to uh, face creating a Facebook page, which he's planning to do. Well, actually, uh, we have an old Facebook page, but it hasn't been maintained in the last five months. Who has it? We don't know who has but we can create another one. That's probably the best way. Yeah. yeah. If that's going to do it. It's seventy people. And it hasn't, it hasn't been posted since probably August. So. And how about City Hall? Do we have anything here? Do we have flyers here for people? At, uh, is no, there a bulletin board out there? But that's what, that's what the rotunda is right here. We, I think 
suggested that we have flaggers out there. I was keeping the bumper stickers out there as often as I could remember to put them in a but now they have the correct information on them. <laughs> you, you like to go out and kill somebody every time you see one, Joe. It's crossing. Thanks. Thanks, Al. I've actually been thinking about going back to the folks, your friends at um, North Greenbush Tape. Is that what they're called? Oh, North Greenbush, Greenbush Tape. 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 And have them make a roll of, of tape that has the correct information and just put the stickers on that. I, I, don't, I don't know if they can do that or not. Oh, they can do that. I'll approach them. Okay. Um, is there anything new that people would like to discuss or bring up? If not, I did notice a couple members of the public were wanting to make a comment. So with the permission of the board, I'd like to open up a public comment again. I had asked before, Dennis Carius, um, with the new technology, I know that you can transfer video um, over the cyberspace. You don't have to drop off the DVD and you don't have to mail the DVD. You can save gas, um, <coughs> save our planet. Uh, by just sending it over cyberspace. I know Zeb Schmidt does this uh, from Schenectady. Uh, he was sending it to Joe Piazza right here in Albany. He sends it to Time Warner Cable uh, headquarters on High Ridge Road in Rotterdam. The technology is <coughs> And some people would like to have a show not just in the city of Albany, but uh, obviously the whole capital district, which means at least a half dozen of these copies every single week if it's a weekly show, uh, to get trans, uh, transferred. So I'm just asking again if we can save our planet. I know it can be done technically, but we need your okay so that we can each week send these out instead of putting them on a DVD, you know, God forbid if I've got the flu or something and now whoever opens it up, you know, maybe they're gonna catch it. Or, or even, you know, if I just mail it or something and you open up the mail, so I'm just asking if we can just send it over cyberspace, which is really going to save our planet. It's something we can take into consideration now that we have a, te a technology committee. It would be a great place for that to be discussed. It's another piece of equipment that tells yourselves that uh, Schenectady has. And it enables you to send this. Any, any program, any content producer can send that uh, to the right directly to the server. And they will have all the information as well. So that it's labeled, everything's in there at a time, and the schedule just takes and drops and drags. But it's another piece that is sold by television. Okay. Right now you can FTP it, but it's a slow process. Like we tried to FTP from the library back to the Heron. It's so long for it to happen. Uh, but with this other piece of equipment they sell, that's what it's designed for. How would producers sell send it in? They apparently can go on I think, wherever they are, and this thing goes to. I'm not, I can't say I fully understand him. He, he was explaining to me yesterday, I talked to the sales rep again yesterday about a particular product, but I didn't think it was there for him. I was interested in this point. It's a few thousand dollars for it, but I believe what it does is you send it to the cloud. And it's not what it is. Yeah, it converts it to the right format, and then send it to the server. And all of the information that also goes along with it is included in that. Jack Prakash here, an SIT graduate, 2003. I wanted to direct this to Tom. I was curious and interested in what are some of the advantages to using the studio equipment at the NSRT school over like a friend doing the show and filming independently as far as the quality and uh, what you could do with the cameras and editing Tom that we might not get to do privately if we did it without the school. So well, you can't come do it at the school. Public access channels at the library. Oh, using the uh, library. Presenter. Yeah, that's where all the studios are set up, and you can go in there anytime and use this. You know, do shows, or you can edit, or you know, you can even check out the field gear once you're authorized to do it. But what are some advantages, Tom, to using the equipment there in producing a show, um, quality-wise, and making the presentation, let's say, better than if we were to do it by ourselves? Well, I mean, if you're going to do a studio show, you don't have, probably have a studio. I mean, that's a full three-camera setup there. You know, you can do a full studio show. And, and how would that look more appealing to the audience? 
Would you say that if we... Then w w where would you do it otherwise? Well, like with my friend Dennis did, mm -hmm. and we did it with his camera, yeah. as opposed to go using the you camera. Should go in, you should go in there and do it. Yeah, I mean, there are you know, three mm -hmm. high-definition cameras, so it'll certainly get better in the studio. I don't know what you use, then I don't know what you use. Well, is it, um, I don't know what camera you use. Right, right. Um, Maybe a DV camera or something? It could be, right, just anything. It's, yeah. it's not high-definition. You, you should go and learn, you know, get, get training from the uh, people that run Justin or, or Joe, and you can use the studio on the day. Could I ask you, it was, it was no more than 15 hours per week under Joe Piazza. Now with right. you, Joe, is it 15 hours still? It's Matthew? 15, but it was not over 15 hours a week prior. Right. On Wednesday, and it was probably for something more like uh, six or eight hours. Okay. When you walk in that entrance at Elk Street, the back entrance of the uh, city of the uh, library, there's a staff worker there many hours a week, right? That, right. that staff worker could have the key to the room, right? No. Yes, but no. people have no idea. No. But I, I don't believe that that staff worker can leave his location because he's there in the back door, basically. He can't leave that location to check the equipment. Wow. I, did, I did check with the library. He says, no, he cannot leave his post. Because I know the library would, originally, they would quickly say no, but they probably didn't ask to have so a studio. We asked to have a studio there. To so this particular question, they said no when they backed it up with the fact that he has a post that he's guarding the back door. Oh, and he can't go into the studio and check to make sure all the equipment's still there. Because <coughs> so that, that's not possible. And then the point is you really have to make sure you're running the equipment. The moment they are so we have to in the future. But for example, I spent the day today putting the back together so they couldn't get any work. Uh, so this would happen all the time. People from the general public were going in. Uh, eventually, when you're trained and authorized to do it, there'd be no, I'm sure there'd be no problem. And I'm not talking about the general public. I'm not talking about some stranger coming in off the street. You know how we sign up with Time Warner Cable? If we're going to do a weekly show, we right. have to sign up. Right. That's my point is, can we sign up with, uh, with the yes. public library so that when we walk in there, that person at the desk no. says, okay, sign here. They open up the room, and then when we're done with broadcasting, they go in the room, and they have you sign that you just use the room, and then if anything's missing or whatever, you're on record for having used it. So I'm not talking about stranger. Mm -hmm. But you have to be trained to operate the equipment. Yes, I know. That's so what we were talking about. Okay, that's enough of that discussion, I think. I believe we understand what the point is. Amy, you have a question? Uh, no, I was just responding to the uh, last item on your discussion about outreach to the community on, um, and I certainly think that the direction you're going with reproduction of flyers is essential, but I also was going to suggest that vis-a-vis -vis, uh, channel 16, which is the educational channel, uh, I think more exclusively, that you might consider directly contacting the cultural organizations in the in Albany and in the Capital District with a direct mailing to them, uh, informing them that their programming, whatever they may be doing already, um, there's an opportunity to show that programming on Channel 16. I don't mean hosting an original programming at the studio. For example, Albany Symphony does their monthly um, uh, programs at the library where they, uh, David L. Miller, the conductor, hosts a program where he goes over the, the upcoming symphony. That's original programming. I'm talking about existing kinds of things that these cultural organizations uh, may even have that they could show rather than, I mean, I'm, I guess I'm speaking to the issue that I would like to see more expansive cultural programming rather than just video, music videos. I think that's a very limited view of what Channel 16 can do. And um, I mean, culture can encompass many things. I'm not demeaning music videos, but I think it's a very narrow interpretation of what we could be doing. And so direct outreach, I hope that you have money that you could do a mailing to the cultural organizations or individually take a certain number of them and call them and let them know. Um, but I think that's an, an opportunity that should be. We spend a tremendous amount of time making phone calls on our dime. Well, then day. actually maybe so that's almost. not an appropriate use, uh, Tom. Maybe they're out of the funds that exist for this entity. There are no entity. funds that exist. Um, we can't use the funds for mail. Unfortunately, the Department of the franchise, this is not just in Albany, but around the entire country, um, 
capital money that's given to the establishment right. of a peg station can't be used on non-capital expenses. So we can't use it for promotion or stuff like that. In some cities, the city has set aside some of the franchise fees for use for right. promotions and things like that. And it is possible that when this board is brought before the council next week, next week it might that be that question can be brought up to the council. Yeah. But we intend to get any of these things on that we can't live. For example, over Christmas we had the Orange High School. Their choir came in. We had 60 people in the TV studio, and they, they sang for probably a half an hour live on, on television. Anybody that we can get in, we try to get in. But you have to understand, it's a tremendous undertaking to run a television station with no funds. Oh, no, and I'm if not. it becomes too costly for me, we will stop running that television station. We'll just do it online. We don't need to do it all night. All right. <laughs> Thank you for the opportunity. All right. Well, yes, sir. Hi. My name is Mark Rogers. Um, I just want to let you, I think you're going to get a lot of information uh, if you go to Schenectady Cable, for those who might not have gone there, uh, and practice is to have a promote and have a program uh, or your, pay, your free pay channels. Uh, I just was over there a few times uh, taping a show with Nick Barber called Impact. But, I mean, I was very impressed, you know, with Proctor's on the bottom of the doors, and you're always looking so you don't trip. They had the, the stenciled on the, on the doorways with channel 16, 17, 18, and which channels go with which, um, which topic goes with which channels. And, uh, you know, I just think that there are other, I mean, everywhere I went around Schenectady, I saw glimpses of, or reminders about the um, about the peg system and the peg channels, and I'm sure that as you grow, you're going to you're going to see. Well, it's one major problem. Things. They have a budget of over hundred twenty thousand dollars a year that comes out of the franchise fee. Well, I'm, I'm yes. just giving you. You're going to learn a lot about from Schenectady as to what you might be able to do if we had the hundred twenty thousand. Even with that, but you might be able to want to shoot. No, I agree with you. And you I just think that you're going to learn a lot and right. maybe set goals. And then say we could do this, we could do this, we could do this. You know, we need a fundraising. You know, the United Way thermometer, and we, we do fundraising. If you set up the five one c three, and you know what you're going for. So I'm just like, well, this we, if you're just right, this is also we, the reason we invited the, the person who runs the connected to take the set team yeah. uh, here. And, and I just wanted, to, I just wanted to make mention that I did uh, when I was in college. I knew the, um, I took two semesters of classes at Open Public Library under John Sillian and Bob Katz. <laughs> and I did, and, and they put all the Google Brannigan and others uh, that with uh, that, that had programming. I, I made a half hour of film for my community service, and I just think that I had a tremendous um, opportunity, a tremendous learning experience by being there for the two semesters. And uh, I think what you're doing is terrific. And I want to see it thrive and start again. So anyway, I just, I think you should get people. We, we the Indian have a, I like to kind of try to wrap this up, OK? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. who have a, I think there's a lot of more people who have something to say. Sure. I don't know if I should have looked up all the time. <laughs> yeah. Oh, geez, and even Mr. Kanji wanted to say something. Um, go, young lady, please make it brief, OK, because we are winding down.
Every we have worked out as a board, and we actually have to have conversations with the public okay, board well, members. I just, them, but I appreciate that concept. It's a good one. Okay. That's really where we're trying to go with the volunteers. Okay. So thank you. Yes, sir? Oh, no. I think he okay. had a lot. I want to be very quick. You know, at our last council meeting, we were really thank you, John, and the two board. Uh, but what the council was interested in doing was inviting um, either you as president of the board or the board to come to our next caucus to really update us on what's happening, uh, status of things, et cetera. And that would be actually a week from today. Okay. Kashana um, sent me an email. She did send you. Okay. She did. And um, uh, she's ahead of me. Joe Pamela, myself, and Joe Ann are planning on being in your caucus. Okay, great. And that will be, you know, we'll give you the time you need after we do our regular agenda. And that will be next Wednesday. Okay. Great. I'll let members know. Thank you, Mr. Comedy.